Hey guys, I'm, I'm Jeff. I'm actually uh, doing the last one and the next one together. All right, we're ready for you. Sorry, I was waiting on you folks to tell me to start. Uh, I'm actually Legends. I'm uh, also a resident in emergency medicine at Magnolia Regional, the same place Dr. Spratt that just presented us at. Had a very odd presentation. A 43 year old gentleman uh, came in uh, to his ophthalmology office with a two week history of blurry vision and headaches. His PCP sent him to the ophthalmologist because he thought he saw a um, uh, dilated uh, disc on a fundoscopic exam. Ophthalmology agreed and said he needs an MRI, uh, which he subsequently got. And that's the top three images were the MRI that was done. Um, it was read as negative. Uh, and then later in the day, they said, well, perhaps he just needs to have an LP done uh, for normal pressure hydrocephalus. So um, that was done the next morning by IR. Uh, later in the morning, the patient developed a, you know, a pretty common uh, presentation for a post-LP headache, actually went back and had uh, a blood patch done by anesthesia that same day. Later in the evening, he presented to us um, in the emergency department with another headache but he said this one was very different compared to the one he had earlier in the morning. As such, we actually scanned him just with a CT. Now, what's odd is uh, just a short time earlier, I had a negative MRI, but on our CT scan, they actually saw a 1.4 mm -hmm. centimeter pineal mass that was not seen on the MRI. I actually called and talked to radiology who went back and reviewed the MRI, and they still said that they never saw it on the MRI. So the presentation here is of a pineal mass that was basically discovered after an LP, which we couldn't find anything in the literature that that has happened before. Pineal masses are pretty rare on their own. They're less than 1% of all brain tumors, uh, pretty common more so in males than females. Uh, and they have an overall pretty good survival rate of about 70%. Uh, this patient was uh, transferred to North Mississippi Medical Center, which is in Tupelo, which is about an hour south of us. It's our closest neurosurgery center. And he was transferred down there for a biopsy and resection of the tumor. Uh, unfortunately, I never got the path reports to tell what the tumor actually was, if it was benign or not. But when I talked to radiology, they said it was a very atypical appearing uh, mass. They thought it would probably be a low grade neoplasm. So just an odd case of where uh, an LP actually uncovered a brain tumor that was on a negative MRI just a short time earlier. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. We'll open up to see if anyone has any questions. Yeah, and if anyone has any ideas why this would show up on a CT later, I'm, I'm happy to do it because I talked to several friends at Ohio State who were in uh, radiology and such, and everyone I talked to said, I don't know, it's just weird. <laughs> I guess my only question is, you mentioned that the morbidity and mortality rates are on 12%. Is it just because of the metastatic potential from the tumor or does yeah. it cause any like symptoms or anything does it secrete to cause uh, the high morbidity or the morbidity and mortality effect? Yeah. So those numbers were actually quoted in the neurosurgical literature. I don't exactly know quite where they got that from um, because it was a pretty high morbidity and mortality rate. Uh, I guess just because the way the neurosurgery has to be, it's, you know, right there over the fourth ventricle. And, you know, this was compressing the fourth ventricle, which probably led to the normal pressure hydrocephalus, obviously. Cool. All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions, I think we can get started with your next presentation. Uh -huh.